Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to part 12 of Sonic Generations. We just saved Blaze the Cat from the eternal hell that is Sonic 06. <laughs> the stage was fine. The stage was good. But uh, now it's time to move on ahead to... You know, they don't cover too much of the Dark Age, which I'm actually very thankful for. No Secret Rings, no Sonic Chronicles, none of the Rivals games, you know. <laughs> Sonic Generations, aside from 06, shined on most of the good ones. We didn't even see Shadow the Hedgehog and stuff, so thank God for that. But, uh, we're moving ahead, folks. We're moving ahead to this particular stage. It is... Rooftop Run from Sonic Unleashed. My favorite stage of that game, and oh my God, look at this. This is straight up the hub world of Spagonia from Sonic Unleashed, only from a 2D perspective. Like, that is the university where we found Professor Pickle, and we would talk to a whole bunch of NPCs. And if you actually look in front of this university, there are a whole bunch of flags all over the place representing all of the different continents you visited. Whether it was Halaska, uh, Chunnan, uh, Apatos, etc. So, uh, right off the bat, I'm already a huge fan of this stage just because it tickles my Sonic Unleashed fanboy that lives deep inside me. <laughs> And, uh, speaking of that, I'm coming up to this egg fighter here who is operating an ice cream stand in the background. He's not an enemy you can fight, but he's operating an ice cream stand right here. Which reminds me of the opening cutscene of Apatos and Chip and chocolate! Ah, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I said earlier in the last part that my favorite stage was in this game. It's not Act 1, it's gonna be Act 2 coming up. But, uh, Rooftop Run Act 1 ain't too shabby. I love the musical remix of the Rooftop Run theme song. I really like how they incorporate a lot of Sonic Unleashed's, you know, story and, and character into this world. They even have the barrels that were part of the nighttime stage with the Werehog. Because when you were playing through Rooftop Run at night, there was a section where you went into a place filled with barrels and you had to flip a switch where this one giant barrel would come out and destroy this pathway for you so you could get further in. And uh, we are going to be seeing the clock tower as well. So, uh, you know, if you're a fan of Sonic Unleashed, this is all one big nostalgia trip for you. And I imagine because it was the first game in the boost formula, I imagine the people working on this game were probably really eager to come back to it and revisit it, because, you know, this is when Sonic really got his generation's gameplay from. This is when... I mean, the boost was in Sonic Rush, but this is where it first became 3D, and that's when we had all the rail grinding with the left bumper, right bumper, L1, R1, and all that good stuff, and, uh... Huh. I love the addition of Dr. Eggman's blimp in the background. I don't know why he's patrolling the city of Spagonia right now, but, uh, I like that there's an Eggman blimp, I like that there's balloons and, and confetti, and it seems like there's some awesome parade going on here, you know? They do something interesting with the laser egg robots that were in Sonic Unleashed, where in the original game, they were only really for, like, the speedy sections where you had to dodge them and run into egg fighters to damage them. But in the classic level with Sonic, uh, they, they sort of leave these time trial kind of moments for you, where you have to get through before the laser catches up with you and damages you, unless you pick up an invincibility item box, in which case you're good. But, uh... Ugh, this, this level makes me happy. This level makes me very happy. I really like Sonic Unleashed for the most part. I mean, the Werehog obviously is a steep hurdle that a lot of people have to get over, and I'm not exactly a super huge fan of the Werehog, but I've always said that the daytime sections of Sonic Unleashed make up for all of the bad nighttime sections of Sonic Unleashed. Like, it's worth playing just for that, and it honestly still has one of the best storylines in any Sonic game I've ever played. I love the cutscenes of Sonic Unleashed. They still make me smile, even to this day. With this final part, we have to jump right into the middle of this clock tower. I actually have to go right into the center so I can spin all of the dials so that they'll go face upwards. And then the blimp runs into it. <laughs> oh, I love these set pieces. This is so damn good. And then when you get through the blimp, and then you burst out and run through everything, and it explodes in the sky, and yeah! Oh, that's so good. So damn good. But, um, in a casual run, you're supposed to, when you spring on, you're immediately going to grab one of the handles and one of the, you know, the pointers. And then you just jump and hop until you get to the center, basically. But uh, I took a leap of faith. I hit that badnik, got the red ring, 
and landed right in the center of the clock, which I don't do often. I don't really... Once you collect a red ring, you really can't collect it again. It's not like colors where they kind of respawn so you can get the points bonuses, you know? Uh, so I don't usually take the right pathway all that time, but uh, I had to get the red ring, so screw it! Leap of faith! Let's do it! <laughs> Good stuff. But folks, Act 2 is my favorite level in Sonic Generations, and it's one of my favorite levels in all of the whole Sonic the Hedgehog series, period. This is my favorite level. I always come back to play this anytime I boot up Generations, so let's get into it. This level is my favorite thing to speedrun. This is a level that doesn't really go past the three minute mark, but it is so thrilling, it is so exciting, and it absolutely exemplifies everything I loved about the original rooftop run in both the Wii and HD versions of Sonic Unleashed. If you go back to part 16 of my playthrough of Sonic Unleashed, I gushed about Rooftop Run. I gushed about how it was my favorite level because it just gave me the thrill and speed of Sonic the Hedgehog that other platformers don't really give you. You don't get this from a Crash Bandicoot. You don't get this from a Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. This is what makes Sonic unique. This is what makes him stand out among the crowd. These kinds of levels where you're going super fast and all that. There's always a place for 2D platforming, and I do think that... You know, the classic games are so nostalgic, and they're so great, and I love Sonic 2 to death. But this experience is why I loved Sonic at least in the first place. And the rooftop run in Generations, Act 2, condenses the rooftop run stage that was originally like 5 to 6 minutes long into a 2 to 3 minute long package that is so awesome. The remix of the rooftop run theme with all the violins is so beautiful. I love speeding through... Trashing all of these egg fighters, making my turn with the with the the drift there, dodging all of the walls in time in this speed section right here, smashing through the gates, hitting all the egg fighters, going super fast, listening to this music. I love this level, and whenever I think of Sonic the Hedgehog, whenever I think about why I like this series, this is a level I immediately jump to in my head because it is just so fun. I always replay this. I, I must have played through Rooftop Run Act 2 with like a hundred different music tracks because you can customize the music in Sonic Generations. So I must have switched the music, played it again. Switched the music, played it again. Switched the music, played it again. If this was the demo for Sonic Generations, then they would have spoiled the best part of the game and oh my god. <laughs> I love cutting into the egg fighters so that they'll run into the blimp and if you damage the blimp enough at the end here, it spits out a whole bunch of rings and it stops shooting lasers at you, so uh, you collect a lot of rings. But uh, it's not a super long level, it's 2 minutes 22 when you know what you're doing. But that level is so exciting. I love getting used to that stage and getting the hang of it so I could speed through it really, really quickly. It, it brings a joy to this cynical heart of mine. It brings me in a happy place that very few experiences in gaming often do. And, um, goddamn, I love Rooftop Run. I love that stage to death. Thanks, Sonic. You know, I got a hunch someone or something is controlling that monster. Thanks, Sonic. You know, I got a hunch someone or something is controlling that monster. What a waste of a double cutscene, Vector the Crocodile. You could have said something about how young Classic Sonic looks like everybody else does. God. <laughs> Vector the Crocodile this time around is voiced by Keith Silverstein. Uh... I don't have much information on him. I've seen his IMDB page, and I don't recognize any of the roles he's been. Sorry. He was Hunk in one of the Resident Evil games. That's that's one role I know, but uh, good voice actor. Uh, I just need to hear him being a lot more derpy, and I need him to say find the computer room at some point. 
because I'm sure that performance will be amazing. <laughs> I'm sure that line delivery will be amazing. But either way, folks, we're moving on to the next stage in the 3DS version, and it's Tropical Resort from Sonic Colors. Hey, Sonic Colors was the last Sonic game I played before Generations. We're catching up, folks. We're catching up. And um, the thing I like about Act 1 of Tropical Resort is that it actually borrows a lot from the DS version of Sonic Colors. It has a lot of the same set pieces with, like, the totem poles that will swallow you and spit you out. And it also has a particular wisp. And yes, there are wisps in the generation stages of Sonic Colors. So, I can push X to activate... Burst! This is a DS exclusive uh, wisp that was in Sonic Colors DS. Uh, how it works is, the more you hold the button, the longer he'll build up energy. If you build it up a little bit, he'll go slightly high. If you build it up a lot, he'll go really high. And he kind of floats, he doesn't get damaged by anything. Like, he'll lose rings, but he'll never get killed by anything. But uh, the Burst Wisp was introduced in DS version, and it was not in the Wii version at all. And uh, it's nice to see it in the 3DS version. Some more handheld representation after we just finished that Sonic Rush stage, so... Nice! Handheld times, yeah! <laughs> this theme song is not a remix at all, this is just straight up Tropical Resort as it was from Sonic Colors. Uh, again, you gotta think that, like, Dimps just made Sonic Colors DS, right? So they just made Sonic Colors DS, and now they're making Sonic Generations for the 3DS, which happens to have a Sonic Color stage, so they were probably, like, really used to this kind of level design because they were just working on this for so long, and it's like, yeah, let's go back to Sonic Colors. We just did this, but whatever. <laughs> the Burst Wisp still goes into all of those Eggman thingies where you go inside and then it flips you around, but it only does that when you're a Burst form. If you're regular Sonic, it won't swing around all over the place, teleporting you. Not teleporting, but transporting you, throwing you all over the place. So, uh, make sure you're in burst form when you find those things. And, uh, a lot of bottomless pit here, so make sure you're counting with those burst, you know, those burst trips. And for the final part, we have a whole bunch of fireworks that you need to homing attack chain and make sure you stay on the entire time because it's a bottomless pit underneath you and you need to ride all these all the way to the top. It's a good set piece. I like this. I like this a lot. It's a very good set piece indeed. Boom! Sonic Colors was so good. <laughs> I do I do think it's a little overrated, but I do think, you know, overall, Sonic Colors is still a good game. I'm not going to call it a bad game. It's a good game. I get why people like it. It's a tad overrated. Just a tad. But I like it. It's good. It likes it a lot. And, um, Tropical Resort Act 2 is actually my favorite modern Sonic stage of the 3DS version. So, Rooftop Run Part 2 was my favorite of the console, and, uh, Tropical Resort 2 is my favorite of the 3DS in regards to modern gameplay. So, a Greatest Hits playthrough today. Greatest Hits. I like this level. I like homing attacking these egg ponds. I like boosting and hitting those homing attack chains. This is a very fun level, again, to speedrun and go through casually when you just want to boot up and have fun. I get the sense that a lot of people don't really think much of Generations on the 3DS. This is the final stage of the 3DS version, not counting all the boss fights we'll be seeing later. Uh, so I figure I'll, I'll mention this now. I don't hate the 3DS version of Generations. I actually like it quite a bit, you know. I do boot it up every now and then to replay Emerald Coast, to replay Tropical Resort, to replay uh, Water Palace, and all these other levels that I really enjoy. I don't have a problem with Generations 3DS. I mean, it's not as good as the console version, that's for sure. But, you know, I've always been a big defender of Dimps games. I, I always think that, like, these games are fun to speedrun. They're fun to replay over and over again. I don't have the glaring issues that a lot of people do with Dimps games when it comes to, like, their overabundance of springs and boost pads and stuff. I don't care about that. To me, that's like the same thing as Chemical Plants tubes, where you go into the tube and it transports you somewhere, it's just a brief moment where you're not really playing the game. Like, whatever. It was good enough for Sonic 2, it's good enough for, you know, Launch Base and Sonic 3, where you're just zipping around those things. Whatever, you know? Um, I like Sonic Generations 3DS. If you have a 3DS and you're looking for a fun Sonic game that has very short levels, good boss fights, like, really good boss fights, the final boss of 3DS is way better than the final boss in the console version, you know? 
Like, you're gonna really like the final boss in the 3DS version when I get to it, but, um... I would absolutely recommend this version. I think 3DS Generations is absolutely fine. It's not as good as the console version. You can't customize the music. Um, it does have missions sort of like the console version, although you have to unlock them with play coins, which you get by walking around with your 3DS, and that takes forever because unlocking a game takes five coins. You're only allowed to collect ten coins a day, which is like, what? <laughs> Jesus. You only get two games a day? God. I have to walk around all the time now. Trying to make me all fit and thin. What the hell, Sonic Generations? What the hell? But, uh... I like I liked Generations 3DS. There's only two Dimps games I really don't like, and that is... Uh, Sonic Advance 3, which didn't do it for me. I didn't like the level design of that one. And, uh, Lost World coming up for the 3DS, which, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> But, uh, folks, uh, come back for part 13. We're going to be looking at the console Sonic Color stage, and uh, it's going to be good. See you then.